In this video, we're going to talk about the Arrhenius equation, and we're going to determine the activation energy and the pre-exponential factor from a graph, which I'm going to show you how to draw. And this is a very common exam question. So Arrhenius equation is this. It's the rate constant, and we've got the pre-exponential factor, and that pre-exponential factor is related to the activation energy and the gas constant and the temperature at which the reaction is happening. But that's on the data sheet, so really important. And you can be asked to calculate this pre-exponential factor, okay, and do that from this graph and the activation energy. So we get this equation also in your data sheet. And the key here is can you convert that to y equals mx plus c? So that's your first thing. Can you do that? And they do do this with other reactions as well and ask you to convert them. So it's really useful to know how to convert certain reactions to y equals mx plus c. Now, all you need to know is what do you want to base your x on? What are you changing? What is your variable that you're changing throughout your reaction? Now, the variable we're going to change is t. So can you change this to y equals mx plus c using that t as your variable and therefore your x? So here's how you do it. So 1 over t is equal to x and your natural log of k is your y. So if you know t and you know your k values, you can plot an equation. And then from the equation, your gradient is m, your gradient is minus ea over r, okay? And then your intercept is the natural log of a. So that means we can work out our pre-exponential factor and our activation energy. So the tip here, though, is temperature is quoted in Kelvin. So you will get temperatures in degrees C most of the time, and you'll have to convert to Kelvin. And then the ga gas constant itself, R, is in the data sheet. Let's just quickly go over why you can do this. So we've got a graph here which shows rate constant against temperature. So rate constant against temperature. And hopefully you can see as the temperature goes up, the rate constant is going up. So there's this positive curve here. Now that can just be explained by the fact if you have a rate equation, and this normally would be rate equals k times a, we just divided the a down, and you can see as I increase the temperature, my rate is going to go up because of the frequency of collisions goes up. And if that's the case, the numerator will increase and therefore k will go up. And that just basically means we get a varied value of the rate constant when temperature is changing. If that's the case, we can plot that. And we can say, right, at these different temperatures, we get these values of different k. Now, if that is the case, you know, if I just go over here, that you've got to convert it to natural log of k and 1 over t. And that's your x values and your y values. So they are, there'll be one or two marks in an exam. So I'd like you to stop the video convert those into those values. So if we do the first one, natural log of k is just a button on your calculator. Just, just press ln, put k in, equals, and there you go. You've got your natural log of k. And we've got all these negative numbers here. The next thing is to convert the temperature into Kelvin. So we've converted it into Kelvin. How do we do that? We did that by adding 273. When it's in Kelvin, you then do 1 divided by t. So we do 1 divided by t there. And we've got our data values. Now with those data values, let's put those up to the side. Okay, and then let's go through some tips for drawing the graph before we do it. Because I want you to actually draw the graph. I do not want you just to watch the video, draw the graph. So here we have our tips. Accuracy when drawing graphs. Always make your line of best fit have roughly equal the number of points each side. Everyone's going to have a slightly different line of best fit because we're not all exactly the same. It's impossible to get it absolutely the same. So when you're answering these questions, there will be a range in which your answer can be. It can be within a certain parameters. But a good aim is to have roughly equal number of points on either side of the line. Now, calculate the gradient from at least half the data, at least. I would do it probably all of the data. Okay, and do it from the line. Do not do it from the crosses. A lot of people do it from the cross. Don't do it from the line. You won't get. You do the line of best fit for a reason. 
Always read on the axis really carefully to look for those times 10 to the minus 3s. A lot of people miss the times 10 to the minus 3s, so look on the axis for that. So we've got an equation, and we've got times 10 to the minus 3s up here, so really important that we read that. Okay, we've got a natural log of k, and we know this is 1 over t here. And we've got this nice negative gradient. Now that is really, really important. In the exam, if you look at this and you find that this is positive, you've probably got your numbers the wrong way around. Okay, you've probably, uh, you probably put the wrong numbers on the wrong axes, okay? It has to be negative, it has to be going down like this. Okay, so this negative gradient. Now, from there, we need to do the difference in y and the difference in x. And all we need to do is find the difference between these two numbers. So again, if you've done it, do that on your graph. And don't expect it to be exactly the same as what I'm doing. It has to be very, very similar. But don't expect it to be exactly the same. Okay, so if that is the case, there's my two numbers. Now from there, I take my two numbers, and I know my gradient up there is minus Ea over R. So that is minus Ea over R. Okay, and from there, I can say, right, the gradient is the difference in y divided by the difference in x. So the difference in y is minus 0.99, and the difference in x is 0 0.0004. So we've just taken it from the graph, and then from there, we realize that, that is equal to minus 2475 got minus 2475. Now, that is minus Ea, minus Ea divided by R. So if I want to turn that into Ea, I need to times by minus R. So I take my, if I go down here and I say, right, okay, my Ea, my activation energy is going to be minus 2475. And if you can remember now the the gas constant, gas constant is 8.314, and we're timesing it by minus, so minus 8.314, right? And that then equals 20, okay, so 2577.15. Okay, make that clear, 15. If that is the case, that can be converted into three significant figures. So I'm going to go 20.6. So I've got three significant figures. You don't have to do it as three significant figures unless it says in the question, but it normally is. So I'm going to do that. And that goes essentially from joules per mole as well. And I want to convert it into kilojoules per mole. So if I do 20.6 divide by, I'm dividing by 1,000 to turn it into kilojoules, that'd be 20.6 kilojoules per well, so I'd really be careful when you're doing this as to what the units are at the end of the question. So the units at the end of the question might well say kilojoules per mole. So you would have to say kilojoules per mole divided by a thousand to go from joules per mole because the original units would be joules per mole in there. So that is how you take data, turn it into natural log 1 over t, plot it on a graph, find the difference in y over the difference in x, get the gradient, take that number, times it by the gas constant to get your activation energy for this reaction. Now that you know how to calculate the gradient and therefore get activation energy, we've taken a different set of data, and we'll explain why, to calculate the pre-exponential factor. And on this graph, we can see that this is the intercept. So it's the natural log of A the pre-exponential factor is our intercept. And we can see on this graph that we've done the intercept. We've, we've extrapolated the line back. And there's a very important point here which we'll go over on our exam tips. First thing is, they often, to try and get the intercept to work, because remember the intercept will only work if it starts from zero. So we have to go on the x-axis all the way back to zero to get it to work. Okay, they often convert the data by 
putting times 10 to the minus 3 in the units. That means 1 times 10 to the minus 3, 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3, 2 times 10 to the minus 3. And often students miss out that it says times 10 to the minus 3 on the axis. So really, really important that you put those in when you're doing any calculations. For example, if you were trying to actually calculate activation energy. In this one, the times 10 to the minus 3 doesn't matter that much because we're just doing LNA. But if it was activation energy, it would matter a lot. Now, let's look at the natural log of A and actually do the calculation. So the natural log of A is your intercept. So on your, inter on your calculator, you will find that there is a natural log button. And then if you press Shift and then press the natural log button, you get this button, which is E. And it's E to your, to your intercept. So that basically takes out the natural log and turns it back into A. So let's do that. So our intercept, OK, so our intercept is 0 0.0135. 0 0.0135. We got it from there. And again, you just read it off your graph. From that point, we then look at our calculator again. We press shift, then press natural log, and it comes up with this E symbol. Now, if that is the case, we know that E to our ln A will equal A. So what we then do is we just put E to 0 0.0135. Okay. And that will equals, and of course, hopefully you're putting it in your calculator at the moment, it will be 1.01. So what we now know is we can do our activation energy by looking at the gradient and times it by the gas constant. We can do our pre-exponential factor by taking the intercept if the graph goes back to zero, okay, using our shift natural log which gives us an E symbol, and simple and easy one to two mark question. One mark usually for extrapolating the line and one mark for doing this calculation.